Continuing with our project courtside, this week we'll be introducing a daytime module that allow us to create daytimes for the game object so all users in different areas can know when the games are happening. This will involve dealing with daytime objects, naive daytime objects, localized daytime objects, and shifting between one time zone to another. We'll be covering a library that I've written called DeLorean. This library encompasses all that all of the shifting and time zone transitions we'll need to do in order for the app to work, as well as parsing stuff from our APIs and user inputs. So let's jump right in. We're going to quickly create a time zone virtual inf. So we're going to work on. So we're going to have to create it first. So we're going to create that and we're going to call it time zone. We're quickly then going to install DeLorean. But before we take advantage of that, I'm going to show you a few things that are needed to be used. Uh, DeLorean depends on PYTZ, which is uh, implementation that contains the Olson database for time zones, as well as date, date, Python date util, which gives us a few tools for manipulating and allowing us to shift dates forward and backward in time. Now that we have everything installed, we can go about illustrating the problem space and showing you how to solve a few problems when dealing with daytime objects. So we're going to hop into a Python REPL. Um, we're going to import datetime. So we're going to go from datetime, import datetime. So these are one of the many things you'll find frustrating when dealing with datetime. Although it does work very well, it is quite confusing. So if we were to call datetime now, That'll provide us a time, which is September 10th, 2003, 9.40 p.m. So in this particular case, you'll see that the time is centered around Eastern. But if we were to do daytime UTC now, we would then know that it is four hours behind. So it is, or four hours ahead rather, and it is 1 a.m. in the morning. GMT, which is the standard time that that everybody goes off from, and then we're all in our for our respective time zones where they're shifted back or forward from that GMT, Greenwich Median Time. So when you ask for daytime now, it gives you a value that doesn't have any associated time zone, so it just assumes, hey, this is the current time for the time zone you are in. But if I were to tell somebody else in China, for example, hey, what does your daytime now mean? He's going to tell me something else, not what actually is. But if they were to both run daytime UTC now together, they would both get the same exact value because we're all referencing the, the same UTC or GMT time. So the difference with, the, or the problem rather, with daytime now is that it is ambiguous. It doesn't have any time zone associated with it. To know whether or not something has time zone associated with it, so when you print it, you'll see. You can also check its TZ info, so time zone info object. If it returns none, that means it's a naive object. So everything I've discussed now, even though it is representing a different time, they're all naive daytime objects, meaning there is no TZ info or no daytime or time zone associated with it. Now, a localized um, time zone is something like this. So we're going to import t PYTZ, PYTZ dot UTC is the UTC time zone. So if we wanted to do something like PYTZ UTC localize D, we would get returned a uh, daytime object that was localized to UTC. So when you were to look at this daytime object, you know that it is a daytime object with a time zone UTC, meaning that it is at Greenwich Mean Time, September 10th at 9 p.m., which we know to be incorrect because the current GMT time is daytime now. Daytime.UTC now which would make more sense, and we were to assign that to D, and then rerun our previous example, we would have a valid and accurate current daytime object, which is localized at UTC at the correct time. 
Now, this can be very tricky when dealing with things when shifting. So if we wanted to do the same thing and we had uh, localized, is which we'll call what which we'll call a daytime object with a time zone localized to Greenwich Median UTC. We want to normalize that to our current time in Eastern Standard Time. So I'm on the East Coast, and we want to standard. We want to shift this current time over to uh, EST, Eastern Standard Time. What we do is PYTZ. So I'm, let me just see if this is the correct one. EST. Nope, that wasn't it. I think we can get it by doing this. Yeah, perfect. And then we will go dot normalize and we will pass it PYTZ. Pardon my poor practice, it's just I didn't assign it to a variable. D and then close that and then as you can see if we were to do daytime now which will give us uh, which will give us a naive daytime you'll see that it is the same time in EST which is the static EST what we wanted was the daytime day daylight savings time sensitive EST but you get the idea here is that you will see the shift happen here accordingly so you saw that it changed the time as well so before when we were localizing simply the change would not occur in the daytime. It would only change the time zone. But when we, when we are normalizing, it will also switch the time in order to match the shift that we just caused to happen. So we took an object that was in UTC, and we said, what time would you be if you were on the Eastern Standard Time? Which you can clearly see here. Now, those are just to give you the lay of the land. There are a few more things that DeLorean gives us. I'll show you a few examples rewriting what we just did in DeLorean real fast so you get a real understanding of what's going on. So, as I said, DeLorean is a daytime module I've written. Um, it encapsulates all that confusion that I had gone over earlier in terms of understanding the difference between UTC now, daytime now, the time zones, shifting, normalizing daytimes. It also provides a few other things that end up becoming convenient when you're dealing with daytimes, like dropping to midnight, raising it to the last hour of a period of his day, parsing strings from APIs into things that make sense. These are all leveraged from the utils that I discussed earlier, which are PYTZ and DateUtil. So just to get started, I'm going to quickly just show you an example here. So we're going to go from DeLorean, import DeLorean. So DeLorean, when you just call the object on its own, it will return to you a UTC daytime. So it'll be a UTC time, which is 2 a.m. in the morning at UTC. Now you can shift that by simply calling the shift and then typing the time zone you would like to shift it to. So let's say Eastern. I need to provide a valid Eastern time. So Eastern is EST, sorry. And it will shift it to EST and it'll tell us it is 9.05 p.m. So Things like shifting become quite easier. Um, what else can we do? We can also do some natural language parsing. So for example, if we were to give it a daytime, so let's say we're working with today, so D is equal to that. We are also able to shift it. So we'll go, we can go do something like, something like next Tuesday. And that'll give us the next Tuesday that happens to be, which is the 17th of of uh, September. We can do things like next month, which come in handy when dealing with things. We can have it parse things. So from DeLorean, import parse. Quickly go here to get an example of a daytime we could parse. So for example, we could do something like that. And it'll take that object pull it down, noticing that it's only providing a year, day, month, it'll default to midnight and give, and then center it on the UTC time zone. UTC is just a good default that I provided. If the person provides an ambiguous daytime, it'll just assume UTC. This is good practice to have. 
in terms of when dealing with stuff internal to your app, make sure everything internal to your application is UTC, then transmit and convert on the way out. So for example, you're dealing with a user who is EST, he sends you some date times, on the way in, you'd go, okay, I know that user is EST, you'd convert to UTC locally, so you know that when you're working within your app, all you need to worry about is just UTC times, so it's all consistent and clear, then on the way out, you convert back to the user's time zone. So when you're displaying it or you're dealing with user input, you convert and on internally only use UTC. This gives and clears up a lot of the the confusion that comes with using and handling date times because you aren't sure what is what. Now, another thing you need to purge from your entire code base is date time now. This is useless because wherever you're running your code, whatever time zone it may be, is what the date time will be, which is useless to you. You do not want naive date times when you're dealing with user input and users in different time zones and your application has to deal with time. As such, in our courtside application, we do have to deal with time. So we need to take into account what the user is putting in and take into account where the other user, user is viewing it from. So if we have two users in EST, that is perfect. But if we have one who's just, just in the next time zone or on the edge of a time zone, things like that need to be very, very clear without having to deal with that. Now, if you want to create something like a list of date times, what you do simply is to call the parse on, not the parse, but the, the stops command in DeLorean. So what that lets us do is generate a list of times according to some rule. So for example, you wanted to list every hour for the next five hours using DeLorean. We'd go from DeLorean, import stops, we would go for stop in in stops. You provide a frequency. Now it'd be let's say hourly. We would then also provide a count of how many of these we want. And then we would one, two, three, four, print those day times. Hourly is not defined, so we're gonna go from DeLorean import hourly or we can go import DeLorean that's probably the color I was missing that loads some of that stuff in the namespace nope did not do it from DeLorean import promise you I wrote this hourly and then we have a bunch of date times starting from now in UTC and increasing every hour you can do this with months with years, whatever it need be. You can also include a start and stop time. So you'd pass in a particular time and you can increment over that stuff. DeLorean has a bunch of bunch of other fixes and little things that it leverages from other libraries, but it provides a cleaner interface. Um, I would definitely give it a look. Next week we'll be using this to show you how we localize times in games in our courtside application. I would give DeLorean a quick look because we're going to be using it extensively next week. So things to remember, never use date time now. Always, if you're going to use naive date times, use datetime.utc and convert to the correct time zone on the way out to the user. Um, don't get confused with the difference between naive and localized date times. Naive date times have no TZ info, that's time zone information and localized date times have time zone information. Localizing is the process of taking a naive date time and localizing it to a time zone, while normalizing is taking a localized time zone, so UTC, and shifting it to, to EST, not by just switching the time zone, but also by switching the time so that it translates to the exact same global time, if you will, in in the world. Um, that concludes our daytime talk. I will provide links to DeLorean and the examples here in the show notes. Till next week.